Hello, my name is Robert Morrison and I'm a product manager here at Pasco Scientific. Today we're going to look at the Precision Interferometry System, the OS9258B. Included in the system is our Precision Interferometer, the OS9255A, a track for mounting your laser, the OS9172, the accessory kit, OS9256A, and a laser, the OS9252. 8514. These components comprise the system and we're going to take a look at how we put them together to do the experiments. For Michelson interferometry I'll be using the component holder with lens, the beam splitter, the compensator, the movable mirror, the adjustable mirror, and the screen. I'll be moving the movable mirror with the micrometer knob. Okay, I've placed my bench right up against the side of the precision interferometer and I've placed my laser on my bench. The beam is traveling through the lens holder to the mirror and it's bouncing back and this is the first step of alignment. I've rotated my components so they're out of the way and I've removed the lens so that the beam can travel clearly through and bounce back and I'm aligning it so that it bounces directly back to the laser itself. So I got the beam coming and going. And this ensures that I will line things up in the proper opti optical path for the experiment. Next, I'm going to move the splitter into place. And when I do that, I'm going to send one beam to the adjustable mirror. And I'm going to send the other beam through to the far mirror and then back to the lens. And as you can see on the screen, hopefully, I have two very clear beams, one above the other. And I'm going to adjust my, comp my splitter until they're right on top of each other and I'm going to cinch it down. And what I'm doing here is ensuring that the beams are lined up properly. Once I have them lined, and they're pretty close here, so I'm, I know I am close to where I want to be. I'm going to take the adjustable mirror here and I'm going to use the fine adjust knobs to bring those two beams together. Now as you get close you're going to actually start seeing a little bit of wavering and that means that you're starting to see a fringe pattern. But what I'm going to have to do now, and this kind of is counterintuitive, is move my compensator lens back into place to make sure that I'm properly compensating for the path of the beam. I'll check my alignment and then I'm going to bring my lens back into play here and I'm going to have to adjust it until the beam is right back where it was before. And once that actually happens I should see my fringe pattern form. Although a bullseye pattern is optimal, a simple fringe is adequate. Once you have a clear fringe pattern, the way you're going to take data is you're going to adjust the micrometer knob. First you're going to see where it's sitting currently. And then without moving back and forth, you always want to move in the same direction. You're going to slowly crank the knob and you're going to see the fringe pattern move and you're going to count the no you're going to pick a point on the screen and you're going to count the number of fringes that go by as you turn the knob and it's usually best to pick a fixed number for instance 20 or 30 fringes and as the last one passes by you stop take your hands off take a reading from the micrometer and you're going to be comparing the number of turns to the distance that the mirror has traveled and you want to do that four or five different times just to get a good statistical average. And once you have that, you'll be able to calculate the wavelength of the light. Fortunately, we're using a helium neon laser in this, for this system. And the reason that we do that is so we have a good fixed value of the wavelength. And it's very easy to compare to the results that you get from the interferometer. 
With the Fabre Perot method, the components are set up in line. The system accessory kit includes these additional components a vacuum pump, a vacuum cell, a rotating component holder, two additional lenses, two polarizers, an additional component holder, and a glass plate. I hope this overview of the precision interferometry system was helpful, and if you have any additional questions, please do not hesitate to email us at physics at pasco.com. And as always, in particular when you're using a laser, don't forget to practice safe science. Thank you.